has happened in the yacht brokerage business in the last 10 years as a result of the internet and what's made it really challenging for us as brokers. What's happened is that in the old days, yacht brokers basically all had a multi-list that they shared and they most of them worked specifically with the buyer and they closely represented the buyer and then they would buy the boat through another broker or what have you, okay? With the advent of the internet, sites like Yacht World or whatever, people are online all over the world, they're looking at boats, and they're firing off emails to brokers about boats. They're not working with a broker, they're just firing off emails to brokers. If you saw my email box in the mornings sometimes, tell me about this, tell me about that, tell me about this and that boat, tell me about that and that boat, you know, that kind of thing. And that's what we, call, we now call the sell shopper, and they all know more than we do, which is okay. You know, and, but my experience has been that, and I've told my brokers this more and more, that because of the internet, brokers now only have time to work with loyal buyers and loyal sellers, because there are so many people on the internet that are wanting free this, free that, that you simply you would spend your entire day answering emails and, and, and never being able to actually pay the company's bills. Um, but the biggest thing that I see that happens to sell shoppers that kills them is that they have a very, very difficult time understanding what a boat is worth. They see what they're asking for the boat in any location. And it's amazing to me, uh, Lexus has been working with quite a few Australians. These guys are halfway around the world. And they've decided that they're going to buy a boat because their currency is strong and it's in some other location. And they don't know what the condition of the boat is. And then, and for example, Alexis was working with a guy that wanted to know about a boat that was listed by another company. And so Alexis says, well, I'm in St. Martin, so I'll go over and inspect the boat. And he wrote the guy up a whole report about the boat. And then he contacted our Turkish agent, and our Turkish agent had to write up a whole report about another boat. And then he bought a boat from someone else. Okay, so what happens is, when people are asking brokers to go to the 10th mile, it gets, you know, it starts to get very difficult. But I think that the condition of the boat is really the key. And the other last thing I would say is, I think it's a really good idea if you're buying a boat that's offshore or whatever, to make an offer on the boat before you go to see it. And I know that's counterintuitive. And the reason is, you never know what somebody will sell a boat for until you make them an offer. And there's no reason to fly somewhere and see a boat that matches your expectations if the seller's position about the value of the boat is out of line with market reality. Okay? So I always tell people, let us first ascertain the condition of the boat, and then we'll tell you about what we think that boat is worth in the market. And if you can get it for less than that, great. So start making offers, see what you can actually buy the boat for. Because all these offers, as Alexis will explain, are pending your personal inspection, number one, and then you can go to step number two, which is to survey sea trial. And so all along the way, there's no real financial obligation to find out what somebody will really sell a boat for. So that's something that we do. And, and lastly, before I turn to Alexis, I want to say what we just developed at the multi oil company, and I'm rolling it out in another month or so, is called the multi oil company catamaran condition index and it's a five page sheet that each of our brokers take onto a boat that we just listed and we will rate the boat the windows the condition the cushions only a visual inspection but a complete rating of the boat and its condition and that will be a service to buyers who want to know what's up with this boat how does it compare to you know some other boat and we think that'll be really, really helpful to people because that's the, the question. What's really the condition of the boat? And the problem that's happened in yacht brokering, as I've seen it, and I've been in it for quite a while, is that anybody can call themselves a yacht broker now. They don't have to have li they don't have to be licensed, they don't have to be bonded, they don't have to have escrow accounts. So you've got people down in the French islands that ha are set up on the internet and they throw up a boat on Yacht World and they put three or four pictures up on the boat, and the boat might not actually even be for sale, honestly. I mean, it is shocking to us, actually, when we're on the internet now, at the amount of disinformation that exists. And so when we're representing buyers, we want to go and inspect the boat ourselves, we want to look at it, we want to know what it is,
and then we can you know start to get serious about it.